As a deer hunter, I want to know all I can about America's favorite big game animal. That's why I became a deer farmer. Without deer farms, we lose our greatest resource for research and whitetail management. With them, we gain more knowledge than ever before. Join me as we discover the truth about whitetails and meet those who work every day to preserve this great species for future generations. My name is Keith Warren and this is Deer and Wildlife Stories. It's the first week of September, everybody, and the bucks, well, the bucks right now are fixing to get really ticked off at one another. And the reason why is because they are rubbing out of velvet as we speak. On today's program, we're just south of Houston, Texas at Tejada Whitetails. This is home of a buck that everybody in the country is talking about. His name is Gunslinger. I'm George Tunall. I'm the owner of Tejada Whitetails. We're located about 20 miles south of downtown Houston. We've been deer farming right at about four years, and currently counting ponds, we have a little over 300 deer. One thing that got me started in this deer business is that I enjoy working with deer and seeing deer, but really what makes it a lot of fun is that it's something that my whole family has been involved in, my two daughters and my wife as well. Whenever I set out, I basically just wanted to raise really good deer, and now it's kind of changed a little bit. I want to raise some of the best deer, but I really want to make sure that every deer that we raise, that we're able to help someone else get into business and enjoy it and have as much fun at it as we do. All right, so these are your two-year-olds? Yeah. George, I cannot believe these are two-year-old deer. I mean, they look to me to be three or four years old. Seriously, they're two? Well, I mean, at least I remember them being two anyway. <laughs> No, I mean, I look at them, I'm thinking they they look like super-sized two-year-olds. And how long you been farming? Four years. All right, folks, I want you to take a look at that. For four years, he's been at it, and look at the deer he's growing. Now, there's a difference between George and a lot of guys, and the difference is that a lot of guys started with quantity instead of quality. And I think that that's one thing that you're a good businessman. I mean, you've been in the exterminating business for years and years in the Houston area. And so when you entered the deer farming industry, you wanted to focus on quality, right? Yeah, I mean, I figured that quality is always easier to sell than quantity anyway. Uh, don't get me wrong. A lot of times, you know, you, you say, hey, you know, I'm going to go out and get more. That way I can learn. I can get there faster. And instead of buying 10, somebody may go buy 20. Well, I really think in deer farming, you should do the opposite. If you were going to buy 10, buy five because you'll have better genetics and jet better genetics sell themselves. And you can see, I mean, 400 inch deer don't just happen. Over Who's there. that big dude right there? That's King. King, he was born here? Yep, born here. Okay, and folks, there's not many people that have been in the deer farming business uh, for four years that have deer born on their place. They're that big, was he 400, I'll bet you. Uh, we, we think he's gonna get real close. We kind of think he's gonna get over, but we're pretty conservative. The neat part is that he's Jesse James' son as well. Oh, really? Yes, sir. Okay, Jesse James, folks, is a legend in the deer industry. Uh, he's still alive, he's on this farm. Uh, George bought Jesse James when he started, okay? And, uh, and now, how many offspring do you have about him? Because there were some problems with him at first. Yeah, the problem was he couldn't draw semen on him and different things. We're starting to get some offspring out of him. Our AI has been exceptional. I say exceptional, 75, 80%. So he hasn't had a chance to cover many deer. And people like him, so a lot of his offspring have been sold. But out of the five bucks that you see in this pen, three of them are nothing short of exceptional. And they're probably in the top six or seven of these 29 deer that you're looking at. Okay, so let me ask you a question. If somebody wants to, now these deer right here, for most, for the most part, they're going to be breeders on somebody's piece of property, or they're going to be pasture deer, which are going to, which are breeders out in the pasture. Okay, if somebody wants some information about purchasing deer from you, give them a telephone number. 832-622-2571. And give George a call, and this place is only about 25 minutes south of Houston, Texas. And uh, you know, just come on down here and take a look. And I mean, you will be amazed. But right now, it is the uh, the first week of September, and the bucks are coming out of the velvet right now. Their their attitude is changing, and there's a yearling that needs to be taken care of, right? Yeah, we need to get him cut off because he's the first one 
that come out in that pen was actually the second one, but he's the first one of that size. Very, very, very irritable. And you know, we just really don't want a hard horn. When, the longer they're hard horn, the more the attitude goes. So we know we got to cut him anyway. So we need to go ahead and get him out of there so you don't accidentally poke another deer, you know, and then we end up losing somebody. All right, well, what we're gonna do, everybody, we're gonna head to that yearling pen. We're gonna knock him down. We'll show you what the process is as far as darting a deer, waiting for him to go down, uh, cutting the antlers off, reversing him, getting him back up. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you a living legend right here in the Lone Star State. His name is Gunslinger, and you're not gonna believe how big he is. This is the time of year when the bucks are coming out of the velvet. The, the bucks, they change their uh, personality entirely. I mean, all summer long, the bucks are buddies. I mean, they're, they're hanging around with each other and they're really no uh, threat to each other. But as soon as the velvet comes off the antlers, it's like somebody flips the switch and I mean, they are ticked off at one another. And so what's happened is today, there's a buck that he is hard antlered. He just came out of the velvet. We hit it just in time. I'm gonna help George and Juliana as we knock this buck down and cut his antlers off. All right, now we're gonna get out. He's laying on the ground up here. Try to get his face mask on him just in case he gets up a little bit. That'll keep him calm. That way he will finish going to sleep when he cut his horns off. Goodness gracious, George, look at this buck. This is unreal, and this is a yearling? This is a yearling, yeah. Look at the size of that buck right there. Now folks, the reason why he knocked him down is because he is the only one in the pen that is stripped out. The, uh, all the other bucks in here are still in the velvet. As soon as their antlers are hard and antlered like this, and the velvet's off, you can see this right here, they, it just changes their demeanor big time. All right, now keep in mind, the animal doesn't feel a thing. There's nothing but bone here. Look at that. Doesn't take long at all. And like I said, that's not blood. Don't think that's blood. That's the paint from the saw blade. Perfect. Look at that. Okay. Juliana will take it. She'll spray this purple spray on there, basically, to keep it from getting infected. Just make sure, just in case, you know, there's anything left to grow, there's not a problem. Let it dry a couple minutes. Then what we'll do is we'll put the liquid band aid on there. What it does is just gives us a little more insurance, just in case there's something on this buck that's not completely healed up. See, it's not gonna take long now. Yep. Let's get out of here. It's good. That's good. Yep. He won't hurt anybody, will he? No. All right, before we show you this buck named Gunslinger, I want to tell you that uh, it is, again, it's the first week of September. I have been at deer farms all over the country, and so I've seen thousands upon thousands of deer. And the deer that we're about to show you has to be, if not the most impressive deer that I've seen this year, he's got to be in the top three. So take a look at him, folks. This deer you're looking at now is named Gunslinger. George, I'm blown away. Well, I'm glad to hear that after uh, all the ranches you've been to. I have been to more places than you can shake a stick at, and I have seen lots and lots and lots of big, beautiful deer. But I don't know if I've seen one like Gunslinger. Now, how old is he? And tell about the pedigree. What makes that deer special is not just because he's so big and not because he's so pretty, but because he's got a pretty pedigree. Right, he's got a pretty pedigree. He's four years old. And okay. That's another thing that makes him special is that Gunslinger hasn't done it just one year. He was huge as a three-year-old. He was big, very large as a two-year-old. So he's done it three years in a row. And we bred him really, really hard. So he actually, if anything, should have been smaller. And as you can see, he's gotten bigger. And his pedigree is just as large. He's Express, which Express stands on its own, as you know. Yep. And then it's uh, he's over top of 
a free agent. And then what really makes it really special, it's over Prime Time's full sister. I'm sitting here looking at that guy and, I, and there's no telling how much he's worth, but I want you to tell people if uh, uh, the value of maybe some fawns out of him, just so somebody at home can get an idea. Well, one of the, the deer that really sticks out in my mind was the first one we sold out of. Unborn fawn, January, so the fawn's not even on the ground, choice fawn, and it brought $19,500. Now, obviously, it had a good pedigree on both sides, but there's a lot of excitement about this buck because of his look, because of his look last year, and because of his pedigree. I mean, he's a proven producer. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna go out on a limb, and I'm gonna look at his main beams, and I'm gonna say they're 33 inches long, and I really believe I'm close, 33 inches long. As far as spread goes, what do you think spread-wise? I'm going to say, I'm going to take safe road. I'm going to guarantee he's over 30. Yeah, I guarantee he's over 30. Okay, and as far as the G2s, I'm going to give him, he's got to be close to 20 inches on those G2s. I mean, I've never seen a deer like that. I mean, the look is beautiful. And look at his demeanor. That right there is a once in a lifetime deer. There's no doubt about it. And folks, if y'all want more information on the deer that they're growing out here at George Tunnel's place, this place is called Tejada Whitetails. George, give them a telephone number and your website, please. All right, it's 832-622-2571, and my email address is george.tunall at deerguardian.com. Thank you, man. Thank you, you, you very have much. done it.